Hi, Cancer Seeker. Welcome to the existential shift for your tarot scope for the month of October, which is a very special month for me. Um, we will be reaching the 10,000 subscribers. Thank you. Um, and in honors of that, I will be doing a live Q&A chat on October 10th. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Um, so stay tuned for that. I will let you guys know which time it is exactly. Um, and I'm super excited because we'll get to talk about different energetic, spiritual things. You can ask whatever you want to ask and I will answer to the best of my ability. Um, yeah, so that's great. You have been an amazing supporter for me, Cancer. Um, September's Terrascope reached 47,000 views, um, which is a real mile milestone. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay. Oh, I am also doing special prices for my private readings uh, in honors of October. So you can check that all out in the information box. You have all the information there. Okay. Cancer. October. Sun, moon, rising, and other placements you resonate with. Seven of Pentacles. Okay. We are invested in something or we were invested in something that hasn't reached its expected blossom. The results are not quite what we thought they would be. Currently, we don't know should we still invest in this, our time, effort, money, anything you can think of that is you know, relevant to your situation? Or should we just let it go and go work on something else? Seven of Pentacles is kind of a meh, eh, kind of card where like, we're not miserable, but we're also not very happy. It's kind of a safe ground where it's better than where we were. It's better than this and this drama, but it's also not the highest goal. It's not our dream coming true. You know what, Cancer? Sometimes we need that just for a little bit to kind of ease the tension and rest out because, oh, right around a corner, 10 of cups. Okay, so some of us has, have invested or are investing in something that is supposed to be the 10 of cups. It's supposed to be the outmost fulfillment of family and love and unity and connection and joy, right? It's the rainbow. In the Rider Waite and many decks, you see the rainbow. And we're working for that. And we're dreaming about that. And the vision and the intention is that. But where does it actually stand? Because here's the thing about the Ten of Cups. And many other very, very benevolent, beautiful cards. The tarot, the cards... Are guiding us to where our heart wants to be they show us our truth so our truth is that we want this now you need to be honest with yourself because if you're sitting in front of me right now listening to me and be like but I'm not feeling the ten of cups if you're not in this perfect harmonious relationship where you have a very satisfying family life um, and you feel happy and content and joyous when you wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep, then that's not Ten of Cups. If you are like, oh, but I want that, then that's what the cards are telling you. They're telling you, listen, that's where you need to put your coins in. That's where you need to put your heart and effort and work and energy at. If the situation that you're in does not give you that emotionally, it's not, it's not something you, you can think. It's not something you can analyze. Oh, but I should be feeling this. There's no should. Do you feel it or do you not? If you feel it, stay. Keep working on it. If you don't feel what I just described the Ten of Cups to be, it's not your spot. You don't make a purple painting using the color blue. Not that there's anything wrong with the color blue, but if you want a purple painting, living a life of blue is not going to get you there. So if you want to live a life that is the Ten of Cups, staying at a situation that is not the Ten of Cups will only keep generating the same situation that is not the Ten of Cups. Does that make sense? 
the cards are telling you where your heart lays. Not necessarily where your situation is in this situation. Because I am giving you advice in this reading. Okay. The lovers and the star. Wow. Okay. So, where will most readers take it to when they see Ten of Cups, the star, and the lovers? True love! You have found your bliss. Have you found your bliss? Some of you have. But many of you are watching right now. And how many of you have genuinely, with full sincerity, can say, I found my bliss? Here's the thing about the star and the lovers. First of all, they're major arcana. They are spiritual arcana. Major arcana. Arcana is advisor. That's what the word means. Major advisor. Major arcana. High advisor. High guidance. High advice. Follow your heart and your faith and your dream. What is your dream? The hope. What is your hope? The star. When you close your eyes, what is euphoria to you? What do you picture? What do you see? And the lovers is a card of choices, but not just a choice between two lovers, between work and relationship. It's a very deep, intense card of choosing between two paths. It's literally a crossword where you need to make a decision. What do I want? Is the situation that I'm at is what I want to stay, by all means. But this shows me there's a decision to be made. There's a crossroad. A path needs to be taken. And the advice, the very clear advice, is the star. Follow the star. Follow the spark of the heart. Follow the dream. Follow the sensation of the dream, not the logic and the alleged promise of the dream. If something is checklist, to be allegedly the star but isn't feeling like it it's not it follow the path of the heart of the soul of the spirit of the dream this is a very strong time of initiation and you need to make a decision what kind of a life do I want to have and in order to walk that path First, it requires strong decisions. Unfortunately, life is not black and white. I mean, it starts there, ends there, etc. And it keeps in that cycle, but it's in between. There are many gray areas where your situation is not the worst, so it's not obvious that you have to get yourself out of there. But it's also not what you want. And if it's not the worst and you don't have that oomph or that kick to get you out of the situation to a different place, then making that decision to get up and go is much harder. It's easy to leave a very bad situation. It's not so easy to leave a mediocre situation of a compromise. The lovers, especially in this, in this you know, with the star, like follow the star, you know, you will be guided by the planets and you will be guided by your spirit guides and you will be guided by your intuition and your higher self but you have to listen and you have to follow that you know that sound that voice with strong decisions the lovers talks about not only choosing a path but making clearance you know you have to clear the other road in order to be to be completely on one path okay if you walk two paths you're not going to get anywhere there has to be choices made. There has to be sacrifices made. And you have to be very clear with yourself emotionally, cognitively, and mostly action-oriented, a.k.a. whatever doesn't suit me, whatever doesn't um, resonate with this path of the star and of the Ten of Cups needs to be gone. From objects in your room that you no longer need or just reminds you of the past and things that no longer serve you and just carry energy of, of something that isn't benevolent for you anymore, throw it out. A job, a relationship, a situation. If it's not you, if it's not this, it needs to go or you need to go. Now, I'm not telling you what you have to do. I'm telling you how the cards are guiding you towards your path and what it is that needs to be done in order for you to find yourself on your path. 
I'm not going to tell you Ten of Cups, the star, the lovers, or the love of your life is coming in in October. It may as well, might be, if you clear and make room, if you break up with a person that is not your, is not the love of your life, if you throw out everything in your house to make room for other things that are more benevolent, if you stay in your past, there's no more room for new. I know a person that talks a lot, the star, all the dreams and all the hopes and all the fantasies that they want to fulfill and do for themselves, for, for people in their life, but they're not willing to actually do the actions that lead there. They maintain the past in their life. They refuse to let go and make room to this new thing that they pretend to want in their life. And then obviously when there's no room for that new benevolent thing and that thing just finds doesn't find itself in their life because they didn't make room for it and then it ends up leaving them because they were just talk and no walk. So they got walked on, okay? Walk your talk. Walk your talk and then you can get there now maybe you're the one who's not walking the talk maybe someone in your life is doing that to you all fantasies and butterflies but not much in reality do not be there and if you're doing that snap out of it immediately if you can't follow up with something don't say it if you want to follow up with something okay follow up with it um, Seven of Wands, there you go. We see the reality here, see? This is our reality, Cancer. Seven of Pentacles, Seven of Wands. Kind of in the middle, still a lot of things to battle off. Different situations that we need to fix. It's not euphoria, it's life. But somewhere above our heads, there's this balloon. We want it, we fantasize about it, but what are we doing to get there? Does that make sense? The thing that you need to do, and look at her. She's allegedly looking towards the monster and the savior. But that's in the fantasy realm, the spiritual realm, the energy realm of the major arcana. But if you step outside to reality, to the minor arcana, she's looking at seven of wands. The actual battles that needs to be taken, the action, wands are action that needs to be taken in order to get there. It's not romantic. It could be technical things. It could be uh, mundane things. Seven of Wands is finding um, is being very is is a card that advises you to be very focused and not spread your energy on things that are not accurate with your path. There's a, a there's a repetitive mechanism here of having to be focused on what it is that you want, what it is that you dream about. And making the strong, real decisions and walking that path. Being the person that you want to be, living the life that you want to live, not hoping for it, thinking about it, waiting for it to come around the corner. Making actions. Seven of, pen seven of uh, Pentacles, putting in the seeds where they need to be in order to grow properly, where you want them to grow. And doing all the mundane, technical little daily battles in order to get there. Achieving our high goals is not a Disney movie. It's not romantic. It can be hard and it requires action. Answer. This is a great read. I like it because it allows me to give you a better understanding of how the tarot works um, because I don't like it when readers see the lovers and the stars and automatically say true love. It means that it's there, but it's always there. We all have the true love in our potential. We just need to get there, seek it and find it. Or being in a place um, cognitively, emotionally and energetically that allows the other counterpart to find us and get to us but if we're not searching and finding and if we're not uh, making room and allowing someone to search and find us and when I say someone it could be your true love it could be your 
a dream job. It could be, you know, many things. If not, we're not doing what it takes, then... I can't wait to see how our um, extended reading will look like, Cancer. I'll show it to you towards the end. What I do in case you're only in case you're new to the existential shift, welcome. I am more new. Uh, what I do is I take the uh, numerological and, and um, elemental aspect of the cards and I rearrange them on the table, and a new narrative comes up or an added narrative comes up, and then I clear the table and do a complete new shuffle of, of um, Celtic cross. So, for example, for this, I will totally use the two sevens that I have on the table. Probably use some of the major arcanas. But we'll get there, you'll see. Also, at the end, stay tuned. I'm going to give um, messages from a new oracle that I'm super in love with, the Akashic Tarot, um, a.k.a. the Akashic um, Library, Akashic Records. You know, and it's they are very powerful and phenomenal, so we'll do that at the end. Okay, let's keep going. So we need to actually step out of our dream state and do the things that we need to do to get to the place where we want to get to. Great. We all know that though, but how many of us do that? Dear card spirit, let's keep going for the month of October for my amazing cancer seekers that are so kind to me. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. Um, I do have special prices for the month of October for you guys, so watch the information box. All of you, not just cancers. All my seekers. King of Wands. Great. Very fiery, desiring, active energy, character. It's not a page, it's a king. Someone that acts upon their passion and it seems like they're coming towards you or it's you but this individual this king of wands which could possibly be a fire sign but i tend to take it in the general readings not necessarily oh as fire sign or, or earth sign or whatever sign i tend to take it as a character so he doesn't have to be a fire sign um, it's just the energy of being very active, passionate, leader, uh, warm, uh, present, uh, reliable. It's, 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 it's not as reliable as the King of Pentacles, but the King of Pentacles is a little bit too earthly oriented. This one has fire and energy and passion that is reliable. It's not the kind of fire that comes, burns and leaves. It's not flaky and fragile like a page or a night it's it's warm it's present it's balanced that's the word I'm looking for balanced fire show me more about this king of wands this could be a potential uh, romantic partner that is in your life or is coming into your life or this could be um, someone influential influential in your life could be at your work now what I'm thinking is some of you are going from one state of existence that is more like a dreamy and fantasy oriented to more to a different state of existence and the state of life that is more practical and mundane oh okay we have another king so two of cups and king of swords interesting so two kings on the table king of wands and king of swords and the two of cups so now that I definitely see a relationship, now that I have a minor arcana, it's not just a dreamy star and lover. So you are about to make a decision, Cancer, and you're about to take a path and move and act upon it. And that will lead you there to the Two of Cups, to the harmonious connection, to the balanced and harmonious connection. Now, I really like both King of Swords and King of Wands in this reading because they are surrounded with positive um, energy. I have the Lovers and the Star and the Two of Cups. It's very calming. It's very soothing. So I feel the um, 
the positive aspects of those kings as opposed to well we, we're all complex right so i'm not feeling their harsh aspect i feel like there's two either two individuals in your life that are offering you this and you might have to make a choice or this these this is you and another person like one of you is the fire kind of energy and one of you is the air energy I don't know if it's matter if it matters to any of you, but specifically in this deck, the King of Swords has the Star of David here on his chest. So this could possibly relate to someone from the Jewish culture. I don't know, but not necessarily. Okay, it's also the analytical balance, the Star of David, um, the triangle that reaches to the heavens, the sky, the God, the masculine, and the triangle that reaches to the earth the earth, the Gaia, uh, the mother, two elements of the divine forces that run this universe, right? Allegedly, in accordance to the theology. The yin and the yang, the up and the down, the male and the female. I want to now take a new look at this, so give me a second. Okay, notice that we went from Ten of Cups with the star, very dreamy, fantasy kind of oriented place, to making a choice that is not necessarily romantic, could be like more like mundane and, and, and action oriented and just daily things that we need to take care of that leads us in a very active manner, in a very um, tangible active manner, to something that isn't as a fairy tale as the Ten of Cups and the star, but you know what? If it's real, then it's better. Better one bird in your hand than two on the tree, right? If it's only potential and talk, doesn't matter how great it sounds, if it's not sensed and immersed in your heart and in your existence, then it's not. It's like a bubble. But if this real, if these real people with real intentions and real actions and real direction are leading to this. Now, here's another interesting th thing. They're both facing this, the potential romantic connection, but their horses, the horse, the animal, it will be our instincts. It will be our tendency. So the mind, this is what it wants, but the urges... The, um, how should I refer to it? The instincts, the, the subconscious, subconscious is leading us there to the fairy tale. The head knows we need something real, something tangible. But our desires are still charging towards this euphoric kind of I don't know if real or not in your life situation now we started here and we're going there so I feel like this chronologically leads here eventually hopefully if you'll connect between your logic and your desires between your conscience and your subconscious and have them align with each other that's when you'll find yourself truly fulfilled and not kind of halfway between two worlds. Because if your inner self is divided and lives in different worlds, then your reality is in different worlds, right? As above, so below. As within, so without. So if you are divided, sorry, and you know not wholesome and so is your reality so what do we do we combine forces we have a really honest conversation with our conscious and then we have a really honest conversation with our subconscious now mind this honest conversation with the subconscious doesn't go like this hey subconscious i don't care what you feel like i know what's right i am the conscious this is what we're going to do no your subconscious is stronger than you. It's going to be like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure, 
sure. Do your thing. I'm going to still take our horses and go wherever the fuck I want. If you want your subconscious to listen to you, to your conscious, you need to respect it. You need to really have an honest conversation with it and acknowledge the fact that it is a part of you, that it is you, and you are the one who put all that over there. Yeah, our parents, our circumstances, our culture, our environment, but still, we made our choices. This I'm taking, this I'm not taking, this I'm making this out of, and this I'm throwing out, whatever. Your subconscious is you. So, if you really want to know how to do that, go watch my um, uh, 13th Element True Secrets of Manifestation video that I've uploaded a few months ago. You can see it in the 13th Element um, playlist. And that where there I really go into it, like um, manifestation through the subconscious, through our dark sides, through our demons, through our desires, as opposed to denying them and trying to suppress them, doing the opposite giving them room. So talk to your subconscious, give it room. What is it in the situation that you're not fully happy with? Actually, you're actually getting off of. You're actually kind of liking in a, in a way that you don't want to admit to yourself in a way that you know isn't healthy. Be like, yeah, I love being in an unsatisfied relationship. I love being with someone who treats me like garbage or that is over possessive and jealous. And yeah, I love being in a job that pays me very little because that makes me, that allows me to pay to play the victim and always complain and, and get pity from my family and get attention. I don't know. Find it within you, the, the, the unhealthy thing that exists in you that you try to suppress and love it and speak to it and address it. And only then when it emer emerges to the conscious, that's where you can really have a proper conversation and start balancing things out after you give it room. So what's next? Who are these two kings? King of Wands, King of Swords. This can, if you're a cancer male, this can work the other way. This could be two females. Or if you're any sort of other, like if you're a lesbian or homosexual or heterosexual or bisexual or whatever it is that you, beautiful you want to be, I love you and welcome. Um, so just take it and, you know, copy paste it to your narrative. It's a fire energy and it's an air energy. Who are these kings, masters of the fire element, masters? of the air element in our life and I, I feel it's romantic I have the two of cups I have the lovers I have the starts um, listen the court cards are opportunities real opportunities you're either getting offers um, from two different individuals Let's see. I have death five of swords four of swords nine of cups I like it I really like it. No, I seriously, genuinely, very much like it. Why? The Five of Swords, we can, we can take it to the mundane aspect of the lovers, needing to make a choice, choosing a path, not being, oh, sorry, not being on a fence, one leg here, one leg there, having to make a choice, a choice, leaving something behind the death card, leaving something behind leaving something behind and step into something new if there's a price to pay if there's things you need to leave behind if um uh if you need to count your losses whatever make that change and it will feel at first like five of swords and four of swords like from five of swords from having a few options to having none because you made a choice of getting rid of whatever it is that wasn't working or wasn't being the star for you or wasn't being the ten of cups for you you made that strong choice that didn't feel good because hey sometimes leaving something that isn't bad it's just not hurts and comes with guilt and from there you might find yourself at the four of swords feeling a little bit like you know with yourself contemplating kind of um, taking yourself out of all the equations in order to heal and to regenerate and to know what it is 
that is the next step and what comes from there aha uh -huh, nine of cups true wish fulfilled so yeah we started with the ten of cups but it was surrounded with seven of pentacles eh, and other dreamy fantasy major arcana cards that are guidance but not necessarily reality especially the specific ones of the star and the lovers both say you need to get rid of something the star says like the, the pandora box you need to get rid of your gunk it really connects with the manifestation through the gunk talking to the subconscious to your subconscious with honestly with honesty i'm sorry taking out all the demons and addressing them only then hope and love can come out the pandora box that's the star card okay hope and true love doesn't come unless you heal so if i connect the four of swords with the stars we need to heal we need to heal and make tough choices that aren't necessarily easy and choose one specific path and walk on that path without looking back the death card and what do you know nine of cups I like nine of cups and two of cups I really like it especially when I have these two kings I don't care which one you choose cancer whatever makes you happy whatever is accurate whatever resonates with the path that you chose now yet sometimes we don't know the path. sometimes we need to sit down in the four of swords and contemplate and wait and be silent and allow the information to come because when there's so much back noise around you you can't really hear So take the time, the peace of mind, and when the opportunity comes, whether it be a person, a job, a place, when the opportunity presents itself and it feels right, charge towards that. Okay? All right, let's see our extended cancer. We're having a pretty cool extended. Um, I have here, I'll show you in a second. I just want to fix the, the table. So I have three major arcanas, two sevens, and two kings. Now, even though this is lovely, two of cups, nine of cups, ten of cups, I feel like we've already addressed it and spoke about it, and it's not a repetition of numbers. And here I have four and five. Okay. So... Yeah. Okay. I want you to take a look, and I'll explain. And then stay tuned because I'm still ha I, we still have these um, messages from the Akashic Tarot to give you. So look at your um, extended, and then we'll come back um, for the Akashic records. Okay. So we're gonna talk in the extended about these three. We'll come up with a new narrative and maybe clarify. We're going to talk about the two sevens and we're going to talk about the two kings and see what else comes out of it because there's endless of options. We'll like re re replay the puzzle, create a new image from the same pieces. And once we're done with that, I will clean the table and do a new shuffle and I will do a Celtic cross reading. Okay. A Celtic cross is a very ancient reading. It's very different than the intuitive reading that you see here where I just let the cards fall. It's very organized. It's 10 cards on the table with specific locations and specific meaning. It's really cool. Um, so if you have, if you didn't resonate or if you want a bit more of a less spiritual energetic aspect and more like actual narrative, that could be very much so that, but we'll see. I don't know what the cards will bring. And we will conclude with messages from the runes, which I love. I will, we'll take out a rune for you guys um okay so it's the first time i'm giving you guys messages from the akashic tarot um i've been playing with them a little bit and they're just phenomenal and gorgeous and their messages are just so divine i can't even they're so accurate and powerful and i'm really 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 going to delve into the akashic records world really um 
Okay, while we're waiting for a message from the Akashic Records for the Zodiac of Cancer, my Cancer Seeker for the month of October, please. There, I put it in the card. Now we'll wait for it. I'm going to tell you that you have... I'm doing a really special thing for October because we're reaching the 10,000 subscribers and I'm very excited about that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, now is your opportunity. So please help out uh, and support and show the, and show the love and uh, get to know that more videos are coming, you know? Um, so in honors of that, I'm doing special prices for your, for your private readings. All the information is below. I tells you how much and what can you do in order to get to me. Uh, internationally all over the world I am also doing a live my first live Q&A with you guys uh, on October 10th I will keep you guys posted about the actual hour um, I'll probably uh, timestamp it in the comments below so check it out when we get closer to the time and Oh, links to the extended are also below. Link to Tarot Masterclass. I teach tarot, guys. If you want to learn about each and every single card, um, I have the aces, the twos, the threes, and the fours in Tarot Masterclass currently, and I'm working on doing the rest, and I'll upload them as they go so you can learn from me tarot, which is super exciting. If you want to go through the process um, of lear really learning tarot, you can just go through the, the chronological um, order that I posted them. On. and or you can just in case you just ask the question the tarot and you really want to know what these two three cards mean then you can just choose those cards and and, and see what i say about them uh so tarot master class the extended readings all below special prices for um private sessions q a's was said yeah oh right on time thank you spirit i like it when this when when spirit and energy tell me that okay I've said it all, now time for messages. Ooh, one of keys, the architect. I'm gonna let you take a look at this for a second. We have a couple, a male and female. They're working on constructing something. They look very, they're very Egyptian. Right, you have, we have um, this phoenix and the cats and like we're building something. One of keys. All right, it's a little book, short and sweet and accurate. And let's see what it says. This is story time, one of my favorite parts. Okay, the architect. A man and a woman in rich Egyptian dress stand at a table filled with structural drawings and measuring utensils. He is the architect of all they survey, of all they survey and he points to an unseen building in this, in this expansive project. Throughout the scene, many workers toil on foundations, pillars, and palaces. At a mundane level, you could find yourself involved in a building pro in a building project or renovating and redecorating your home or workplace. Most important, this card shows that it's time for you to step into a position of power. In order to do that, you must recognize your talents and strengths as well as your authority to take charge. An opportunity beacons that utilizes your skills perfectly. Feel the command you have over the great scope of the situation and take charge. This could be these two individuals. Special note, whether the card is upright or reverse, look at the ad ad um, adjacent card to which the architect points. Okay, that's not so relevant for us, but Akashic Force, close your eyes. Take a relaxing breath and move deeply into the authority and confidence that come from your eternal truth. You are in easy command. You are, you are in easy command. Feel your talents and power stir within you as you, des as you design the destiny you seek. Guys, if you're at a crossroad and you're kind of not sure what it is that you want, imagine that your life is an open book now that is completely empty and you get to write what you want in it and yes it's very confusing and mind-blowing but take your time breathe in listen to your heart listen to your spirit and build from the heart not from the logic okay and connect the logic and the um, subconscious and that way you'll have a combination of the two and that's what I really want you to do it's not about ignoring one or the other it's about balancing um, both of them um, and yeah, do the work. This really resonates with the, with the reading. Do the technical building constructive work that requ that is required in order for you to get to the place you want to get to or have the thing that you want to have. 
Stop dreaming and hoping and waiting for it. Go do it and get it. Okay, great. Um, really excited. I will see you in a second in the um, extended reading, like below. Regardless, I will see you guys in November. Happy Halloween! I will talk to you again before Halloween. But yay, Halloween month. I love it. I love Halloween. Um, and, oh, Venus and Scorpio. Don't be scared, Cancer. I know you're emotional. I know you feel things. It is good. Whatever will come up out of it. It will be your subconscious that you will get to have an honest conversation with and really get to know yourself without suppressing yourself. And from there, you will be able to truly work and manifest the things that you really want to manifest. Okay? Um, it will help you see clearly out of the confusion. It brings confusion. We recognize that it is confusion. Sometimes we know what yes from knowing what not. Okay. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. I'll see you in the extended. I will see you next month. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, this is your opportunity. Thank you for being here. Mwah. More games.